Hi students, hope you are doing well. So today we are going to start lecture 54 in our aerospace engineering course. Today I am going to discuss neutral point and static margin. These are important concepts in the longitudinal static stability of airplanes. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now let us start where we left off in our previous lecture and if you have not taken a look at that lecture, please do so because this lecture is going to require you to know the basic derivation of CMCG that is the pitching moment coefficient about the center of gravity of the airplane. So in our previous lecture we had come across this figure the first wing section here was the wing body representation and the second wing section here is the tail representation. So again remember that the velocity coming at the wing body is V infinity at some angle alpha WB and the velocity coming at the tail is V dash at some angle alpha T and these angles are with respect to the zero lift line in both cases which I have shown in red. Now do remember that each of these airfoils or wing sections has a chord associated with it. It has an area S and an area st for the tail it is st so we essentially derived the expression for mcg in our previous lecture on the quantitative aspects of static stability and we saw that there is a part depending on the contribution at the aerodynamic center that's the cmacwb there is a part which essentially depends on the lift curve slope a and also there is a part which comes from the tail component so that's there here and tail component also has some aspect here so we are now going to take a look at this and we are going to use it to explain the concepts of static margin and neutral point also remember that vh is lt st by cs where lt is the distance from the cg to the aerodynamic center of the tail and of course, I already explained S and ST as the cross sections of the wing body and the tail respectively, C being the chord of the wing section. So let us immediately take a derivative of the previous expression with respect to alpha A and you are going to get this equation here. And so this equation here gives us the slope of CMCG and we are going to work a lot with this slope today. So let us immediately now think about defining the neutral point. So for neutral point, we will use the nomenclature H subscript N. So whenever H equals H subscript N in our previous formulas, we will hit the neutral point. So the neutral point occurs when D C M C G by D alpha A equal to zero. Now for this derivative to be zero, I can take the derivative which we discussed in the previous slide and we will simply set this equal to zero. So when we set this equal to zero, we replace H by HN. So that's what I've done here. Here, this is the same expression as given here, but H has been replaced by HN. And from this, I can immediately calculate the value of HN here. So HN is expressed in terms of HACWB and also in terms of the parameter VH, the lift curve slope of the tail and the airplane and the term d epsilon by d alpha remember epsilon was the downwash so these terms of course are calculated from the internal testing and so on and now we have a relationship with essentially relates the neutral point with the aerodynamic center location for the wing body and there is an additional term which is coming from this vh dependent component so if we now look carefully at the neutral point, we will see that the neutral point is actually a fixed location, which was explained by the previous formula, and it's not a function of h. So essentially, you can calculate the neutral point for a given airplane. We also notice that when h equals hn, by definition, the derivative of mcg or cmcg with respect to alpha a equal to zero so do remember always that alpha a we are talking about is the absolute angle and this is with respect to the zero lift line now from this definition we can immediately see that if h is less than hn then this derivative is less than zero which is the criteria for stability or static stability 
and if h were to be greater than hn then this derivative would be greater than zero which means that you have an essentially unstable system so what i have put here in the yellow and the green is something you actually want in most typical cases and what i have put here in the blue and the red are things which you do not want so this is something we are going to aspire for that is h should be less than hn so now in case you are getting confused let us take a pictorial look at these definitions so again i have drawn the wing body section here now you remember the cg is placed somewhere here at a distance hc from the leading edge and also now you have this location called the neutral point it is at a distance hn into c here so you clearly see that in the case h is less than hn which i have shown in this graph or in this diagram here you have a situation of longitudinal static stability so for longitudinal static stability to occur the cg must be ahead of the neutral point so here you see cg is ahead of the neutral point and also h is less than hn because h is this distance here shown in the green and hn is this distance here and you can see here that h is less than hn and therefore the derivative of cmcg with respect to alpha a is less than zero now let us look at more aspects about the neutral point now there is a certain thing you are going to realize if you look at the philosophy behind the neutral point and this is that the neutral point is the aerodynamic center of the airplane so we can think like this so to imagine this situation and why this takes place let us consider the situation that when h equals hn cmcg is not a function of alpha a and therefore this is very similar to the situation which happens at the aerodynamic center at the aerodynamic center you do remember that cm is not a function of alpha so that's essentially the definition of the aerodynamic center of an airfoil section so we can say that the neutral point is analogous to the airplane ac so essentially if we think the entire airplane has an aerodynamic center that point is the neutral point so again to recapitulate this let us take a look at this wing body section and again we have the cg we have the neutral point here so essentially we typically have the aerodynamic center here and we can imagine the neutral point to be the aerodynamic center of the entire airplane so you can actually tailor the neutral point to some extent so you can do that by looking at this equation here so if you look at this equation for hn you can see that this is expressed in terms of h a c w b and this component here and this component is going to depend on v h and also a t and a a t and a of course will depend on the wing sections or the airfoil sections you have selected for the wing body and for the tail and to some extent you can control v h v h would be dependent on l t s t c and s so these are four parameters which you could tailor for example you could change the distance between the cg and the aerodynamic center of the tail that way you can control lt also if you were to control the area of the tail here st then you can control that also so let us now define one more concept which is widely used for static stability and that is the concept of static margin so static margin is defined as the distance between the neutral point and the cg so we can say it is hn minus h so here you see the cg is located here i have shown this in green that's at the distance h from the leading edge and we have shown here the neutral point this is located at a distance h subscript n from the leading edge and this distance between the cg and the neutral point this is the static margin here so how do we get to this definition let's try to do some derivation so again we go to the exact definition of the neutral point that is when h equals hn cmcg by or delta cmcg by delta alpha a equals 0 so i take the derivative here and essentially i set it equal to 0 so when i set it equal to 0 i put h equal to hn and therefore this is the equation which i get which lets me get a relation between h a c w b and h n so this is nothing but this equation rewritten in this form here 
Now I'm going to take this HACWB definition and I'm going to plug it back into the derivative of CMCG with respect to alpha A. So let's start with the equation here. So this was the equation here and now I take HACWB which is in the yellow box and I put it here in HACWB. And so when I expand this out, I get this equation here. So you can see all I've done, I've plugged this here. So this has become a minus HN and there is a plus VH AT by A term. And this term of course has come here. So now from looking at this, we can clearly see that I can remove these two terms involving VH and then I get a very compact expression that the derivative of CMCG with respect to alpha A is A into H minus HN or minus A into HN minus H. Now HN minus H is the static margin. Therefore, this is minus A into the static margin. So essentially the derivative of CMCG with respect to alpha is proportional to the static margin and there is a negative term here. So essentially we see that the static margin should be positive for this derivative to be negative because A is positive. Remember A is a lift curve slope. So let's again take a look at this equation and make some conclusion. We see that for longitudinal static stability, static margin must be positive because this number must be positive for the derivative to be negative, which is a requirement for static stability. Also, we see that neutral point should be behind CG because HN must be greater than H so that this is positive. So we also can say that the larger the static margin, the more stable the airplane. So that's something which you may aspire for certain airplanes. For example, simple small aircraft which are used for training pilots. These are typically very stable because you do not want some neophyte pilot to encounter unstable airplanes and so on. You want the airplane to return to its position if it's hit by any kind of gust or any disturbance very quickly. So let us now summarize some of the important things we learned today. If we take the wing body section, we already know of two important points, the aerodynamic center and CG. Today we learned about one more important point, the neutral point. And essentially we found that the neutral point should be behind the CG that is good for static stability. There is also the fact that the distance between the CG and the neutral point is known as the static margin. And of course, we know that it's a good idea for the neutral point to be behind the CG for stability. So H should be less than HN. So here you can see in all these graphs, I have drawn the green line here. This is H and this is less than HN. So this is a stable condition as far as static stability is concerned. Now, just to recapitulate this concept in a typical aircraft, if we have an aircraft here, you have the neutral point here, you have the CG here, you have the static margin. So neutral point should be behind the CG. That is something which is good for static stability. So today we learned some important concepts which are often used in basic flight mechanics and airplane philosophies. That is that of the neutral point and the static margin. These are very important concepts as far as the static stability is concerned. So today I'll end this lecture. In the next two lectures, I'm going to start talking about longitudinal control. We are going to discuss about the stick fixed stability and the stick free stability. And here the elevator will start coming in. Until now, we have been just discussing the stability. The pilot has been sitting there doing nothing. But now the pilot, or in case it is a drone, some kind of control system is going to try to actually control the aircraft in its longitudinal motion. And you can do that. You can trim the aircraft if it is disturbed and so on. And so that constitutes a very basic concept as far as control is concerned. So I'll end this lecture now. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. And I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.